What's new crew? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Cassandra and today I'm bringing you guys along for an entire week in my homestead kitchen. We're baking cookies, testing some new recipes, also of course lots of canning and a lot of freezing, just a lot of food preservation uh, all around. We're making hot sauce, we're making salsa, we're trying new canning recipes, making some pizza dough uh, for the pasta sauce that we're making and just lots of projects. So. Come along with me and spend a week with me in my homestead kitchen just getting a whole lot of things done and preserved. Let's go. This is just a typical weekday night. It's Wednesday. It's a little after 4 o'clock. The baby's napping. My kids are home from school. But while I'm making supper, I'm actually... Let me show you guys. Okay. We've got... I'm making some brown butter chocolate chip cookies. I've never made them before. I'll link the video... Or I'll link the recipe down below. These go, but... I decided to make these cookies because I'm standing in the kitchen anyways. I've got bread sticks in the oven. And then we've also got, we're making, oh my camera here. We're also making stuffed shells. So I've got all the things happening here. I've just figured while my noodles are cooling off so I don't burn my hands, I might as well make a really quick batch of cookies uh, for desserts and for snacks. I go grocery shopping. Like tomorrow is our last day without groceries. so. The, those last two days can get kind of kind of boring, kind of rough. So this is one of our family favorites with just easy stuff that comes off the pantry shelf. And some really fun cookies will help. I'll throw them in lunch boxes tomorrow. We'll have these for snacks for the next two days. And then I'll go grocery shopping. That way the kids have something fun to eat over the next couple of days. But I'm going to pull out my breadsticks here and finish making these cookies, hopefully, and get dinner done. So lots of things happening. I just finished going through my pantry and giving it a really good deep hey. clean. This is when I do the bulk of my baking because the kids are in school. I'm throwing things in lunch boxes. Um, they take them to school for snacks. So I wanted to see what I had because I have a lot of cookies and stuff that we're going to be making this month. I want to do a video on some easy fall snacks for, that I'm making for my kids. So be on the lookout for that. But I wanted to see what I had. So I restocked those. Um, just kind of seeing what I have. I have to put more flour in here, but we went through this. I also wanted to go through my little McCormick um, seasoning packets and figure out what I have because we are heading into fall and winter. This is when I use these mostly. So I have some chili seasoning packets. I've got some maju. Um, I want to get um, some ranch packets and probably some beef stew packets. Um, some pork roast packets and I'll buy a ton of those at the beginning of the season so during my September grocery haul or maybe even October depending on how my grocery budget goes I'll just buy a ton of them keep them in here and then I have them all winter long I don't have to think about it anymore because I'll have enough so wanted to check those just went ahead and kind of cleaned everything up in here with tomato from the garden but um, I'm seeing we only have one box of mac and cheese up here so I want to grab a couple boxes of those to restock that's what Joe makes the kids when I'm gone typically um, just restocking things cleaning things out so this looks a lot better and is cleaned and ready to go for the next round of groceries which is always um, a very important thing. Today's project is cabbage, as you can see. Oh, if I can't even lift it up. All right, come on, cabbage. Okay, here we go. They were down in the basement. They look terrible, so what I've been doing is peeling off the bad parts until I get down to a beautiful looking cabbage. I'm cutting out the cores and we're blanching these. So I've got a big pot here. This is just one cabbage in this pot. It's just one cabbage in this pot. I had to bring out my water bath canner. It's the biggest pot I have. And I have five cabbages that I needed to get done. I ended up taking the smallest cabbage out of these and peeled it back to just get to the good cabbage. I put that in the fridge. We'll eat that over the next couple of weeks. Here is my pile of yucky cabbage and my cores. These are still great for the chickens. They will enjoy these scraps. So I've got a huge mess on the floor here. Um, I was using my food processor, but I have to cut them down so small anyways to get them into the food processor. I might as well just not use the food processor, cut these up and get them in the water to blanch. And then we're going to package these in Ziploc bags, put them in the freezer, and they will be good for winter's use. I already canned a couple of things of coleslaw. I don't want to do any more because I don't know if we like it. I've never 
canned it before, so I wanna make sure we like the recipe before I use a ton of it, and we will definitely use this frozen cabbage in soups and stews, um, things like that. I'm kind of thinking about maybe keeping this cabbage and cutting it in half. That way I can use this as cabbage wraps for like roly polies or something. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one, just cut out the core and maybe keep it in quarters like this so I have some big leaves. Um, actually, yes, that is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna get this chopped out, we're gonna blanch it, and once I have room in one of these pots, I'll blanch my big head of cabbage in the quarters so that we can use it for roly polies. The cabbage only needs to blanch for about three or four minutes, or boil for three or four minutes, excuse me. And then we'll put it in some ice water, get it rinsed out, and package them in our Ziploc bags. So very easy project for right now. I also have this pile of cucumbers. These are a dual purpose cucumber. My mother-in-law grew these, so I'm not sure on the variety, but she always gives me her overflow as long as I promise to use them. I took five or six of these and put them in the fridge for fresh eating, for lunch boxes and things like that for the kids. Um, I think I'm gonna make these into more pickles. I was thinking about pickle relish, but I think we're just gonna do pickles. So Khalil was still napping, so I decided to just rock off the pickles right away as well. So I ended up getting 10 quarts of pickles. These are just random. Some of them are spears, some of them are slices. All sorts of weird, fun shapes. So we got those. I have seven of them going in my canner. These three will go in the next round. I did that while all of my cabbage here cooled. Um, it's still steaming a little bit, but I think it's cool enough now where I could put it in Ziploc bags and get this going in the freezer. I also need to get these out of the way so my pickles have somewhere to go. They only have to process for 15 minutes. So I should, hopefully, be able to get all my cabbage packaged and these out of the way by the time this round of pickles is done and the, my second round of pickles is done. Um, I've shared this before, but I use the Mrs. Wages cookbook for my pickles and I use the kosher dill home style pickles here. This is what I really like to do. I kept these pickles really basic. I did not add onions or peppers in these, which I normally do, but like I said, I'm not feeling too hot today. Really sleep deprived, so I just sat down. I just sat right here on the island watched some videos, drank a second cup of coffee, and got these pickles rocked out. So I'm happy with that the rest of the day. I'm going to be lazy. The only other thing I'm doing today is washing my bedding. <laughs> and I'm gonna sit down and relax. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for dinner, but this hopefully will be able to be cleaned up and I can get all of my stuff taken care of here. Carry my scraps out once the rain stops. I can get a break in the rain. I'll run these out and put these in the slot bucket for the chickens. And today will be another good day of getting at least a little bit on the shelf, even when I really don't feel like it. This is how I like to package my blanched vegetables. So I like to put my vegetables in sandwich-sized Ziplocs. This is about a meal's portion for us of most things. So I did this with my cabbage. Um, I did this, obviously this is cabbage. I'm trying to think, I'm so tired, you guys. My corn. Um, my zucchini, I do this with peppers because this, like I said, is about a meal's worth. Um, then I will close up these bags and shove as many of these sandwich size bags in a gallon freezer Ziploc and just label the outside of my gallon Ziploc shredded cabbage. I like to do this because it consolidates a lot in my freezer and it is a lot easier to find a big Ziploc size bag full of cabbage or whatever I'm looking for um, than it is to find an individual bag. It's a lot easier to lose these in the bottom of the freezer. They can get shoved down to the bottom um, and you're, it's just easier to get lost. So this is what I like to do. I do this with all of my things. Works very nicely. I also like to give myself options. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen meals worth of cabbage, whether this be a, in a soup, in a stew. I also love buttered cabbage, so I'll take this bag, dump it on the stove with some water, boil it for a little bit, and then just add a little bit of butter and salt. I love that as a side, so good. Um, I also decided to do one gallon sized freezer Ziploc of shredded cabbage in case I'm making a, something in bulk, right? Um, if I'm doing maybe some freezer cooking and I want a lot of cabbage, I can just pull this one big thing out 
and then I don't have to open all of these little individual sized bags. And then of course we have our two halves of our whole cabbage heads here. So we have two meals of roly polies, a big freezer sized bulk option, and then all of these little meals. I have my like fourth roaster pan <laughs> yeah, full of pasta sauce, the exact same thing, except the last two roaster pans I've been doing, I've put in some bell peppers. Um, so mixing up just a little bit, adding more vegetables in and just kind of getting things used up. And here I have a double bash of hot sauce. I'm getting ready to strain this off and get it into jars. My water bath canner is heating up. My dishwasher is sterilizing jars for me. And then I still have this five gallon bucket and this bucket, not to mention whatever's down in the garden right now. And of course a little mess from the baby getting in here and eating tomatoes as she sees fit. But I also have to go around the garden and see what's going down there. So I'm just trying to rock through as many tomatoes as I can. I think I'm going to wash these and quarter these while she naps and get them in the freezer. And I can figure out what I want to do with these later. Hot sauce is actually really easy to make. I really underestimated how easy it was. Uh, I made it for the first time last year and you get a lot too when you make it and it makes really great gifts. So I love making hot sauce because it's really easy, really simple, uses up those tomatoes and like I said, makes amazing birthday gifts, Christmas gifts and things like that. This day I was also making some pizza dough. My pizza dough recipe is written out down below for you guys. It's a tied and true, we love it here. But I'm just getting all of my hot sauce in my water bath canner. This day I actually bought a second water bath canner and I'm really happy I did because I was able to get all my spaghetti sauce going at the same time. So this just made world the world of difference having two canners to load all my spaghetti sauce in because this was already a late night. I think I was up until 10 or 11 waiting for these to process all the way but I just really wanted to get it done. So having two canners made this a whole lot easier, just getting it all on the stove all at once. But this was actually a really nice night. My husband, myself, and my oldest daughter ended up staying up late and we watched the new season of Disenchantment on Netflix while these processed and it was a lot of fun. It's actually a memory that I'm going to remember hopefully for a very long time. But that kind of rounds out the week in my homestead kitchen. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you are. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me. And as always, you guys, I will catch you guys in my next video.